the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition Gen 2 up next. Welcome and thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ray. And if you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, tap that bell to get notified when I post new content. And if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. I very much appreciate it. So in a previous video, I did take a look at the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition for iPhone, uh, but that had a lightning connector. And as we all know, this year, the new iPhones have a USB-C connection. So there is no adapter you have to buy a new controller. But I'm not mad. And I'll tell you why I'm not mad, because this Gen 2, right here, the Gen 2 Backbone, not only has the USB-C connector, it works with both Android and iPhone, but, but, the big thing is, it also works with cases. Um, as you know, the old original Backbone 1 for iPhone, the Lightning Edition, it would not work with cases in my previous video video i did show it wouldn't even work with a thin tack case and that case was really thin even though i could get it to fit with that really thin case it just wouldn't work because of the lightning connector wouldn't reach again the connections so that was a kind of an annoyance that you always had to remove your phone remove the protection of the case and put it in here to use now when it's in here it's pretty secure and you can just replace the case but i'd rather this was compatible with the case and the new Gen 2 is compatible with the case. So the Gen 1 and Gen 2 look very similar. Um, I bet they are probably the exact same thing with a few probably changes to enable that case compatibility with the Gen 2. So yes, you can keep your phone protected in its case and still use the controller. And that's all made possible with this Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition Gen 2. Gen Dalawa, Gen Dos, Gen Dul, Gen Ni, whatever language, Gen 2 is here and it enables you to use your iPhone with its case. So let's go ahead and open this up and try out some cases. Packaging looks very similar. Again, backbone made for iPhone, works with Android, USB-C. You wanna make sure you get Gen 2. If you look on the bottom of this uh, specific PlayStation Edition, if you look right above barcode there, it says Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition, second generation. So make sure you're getting the second generation one. Um, they also make this in black. And there it is. Looks like this thing came loose. This is the thing though that you want. I guess it should have been attached up here. There we go, that's its place. Um, so this is the, there's the Gen 2, get the app. And the app for one of my kind of annoyances with the first one is the controllers do work better with the app on the phone. There's no doubt about it. You can access remote play, you can access everything in one place. The only downside is that is a $50 yearly subscription and it's not needed. You don't need that app you don't need the subscription to use this either with remote play or um, iOS games, but it is more convenient to access it through the app, but I'm not paying 50 bucks. So maybe they'll give me a new free year. So get the app, there's the code for that QR code. You can scan that and some instructions on the back. So this is the new controller. These feel a little different. They looks like they come out more, um, but overall the case looks very similar. And these are what you're gonna need. These are the adapters that are attached magnetically to let you use cases with this. So if you go bare iPhone, you don't need these. I don't know anyone that goes bare iPhone personally. Now there are a few out there that say they do, but if you like using cases, you need these adapters in here. Set that aside. So what's cool is these, these adapters fit magnetically. You can pull off the old ones um, and install these. But let's go ahead and take a look at the two controllers. Gen 1 up top, Gen 2 on the bottom. And as you can see, yep, these are flatter here. This is more rounded. Maybe a top view would show that, illustrate that better. There's a lot more space here to fit a phone. 
or to fit a phone with a case than a Gen 1, which is back here. But cosmetically, for the most part, they look pretty much identical. Um, the buttons on here work really well. I'm trying to get a, a feel like I remember. I don't really remember them until I use them. Um, Actually, feel about the same. A little, I think a, a little bit smoother travel on the the back triggers than on the first one. Yep, I would say smoother travel on the back. They're going to be easier to, to use and manipulate. Not that I found it to be a problem, but there's different hand feel definitely for the back triggers. Uh, the other buttons feel about the same. These might feel a little more stiffer because this hasn't been used. Them sticks feel about the same. This actually feels like these might be a little bit more precise to use. Same button layout, same everything else. Um, let's look at the back. Backs are the same. On the bottoms, uh, same ports, headphone port. US, this was a lightning port. This is now USB-C on the new one. So yeah, now with the new USB-C, Apple's going USB-C, you're gonna have to upgrade your peripherals, unfortunately. But for in this case, I think it's a good thing because now the new one can use cases. So let's see how far apart these spread. Did it go wider? Yeah, It'll, it's a touch wider, actually. So this should, this should accommodate larger phones. So let's go set this one aside. This is the old lightning version. And concentrate on the version twos or the gen twos. Let's go ahead and change out these adapters. Well, let's put the phone in there first without the adapters. So bare phone will fit in here without the new adapters, just like that very much like the older one. But since we have adapters, it's cool they give these little things. I don't know if I'd be able to pull those out with that assistance. The old adapters for if you're going caseless, we'll set those aside. I'll probably never see these again, so I'll just store them back in the box or wherever. Um, and the new adapters so I can use a case because I Never leave the home without home, leave home without a case on my phone. I'm not that much of a risk taker. So new adapters. So these are the new adapters. You can see this one has the opening, so that's where the USB-C side. And with that magnetic, it just sucks that in right in. Easy to install those, boom. So now we'll put the phone back in this case and this is the fine woven case that people love to hate. I like my fine woven case. Put the phone back in there. And oh yeah, you can see how this controller fits really well with that case. Look at that. So if you want to use a backbone controller with the case, get the Gen 2. If you have a new iPhone 15, you're going to have to get a new one anyways. Make sure you get the Gen 2 so you can use that case on there. So I'm going to do some quick uh, case fittings so we can see what kind of cases I have that can fit with this. So we'll do that real quickly. So Apple fine woven case, Gen 2 backbone. So another case I took a look at in my clear case video, and if you want to see that video, I'll link it up here, is a Magbag case. And this is a Magbag clear case, and this is a real functional case that I find myself using off and on for that extra magnet there. But this is a thicker clear case. So this is a clear case, but it's a bit more material. And I'm sure a good bit of you probably own a Magbag case. And that fits perfectly as well. So Magback will fit on a Backbone one, the second edition. So Magback, no problem. And we're gonna start a pile here on this side. 
Next, we have another popular case. This is the Spigen Ultra Hybrid, and this one happens to have the matte back on there. I'm sure a lot of you use a Spigen Ultra Hybrid. It's kind of like the default clear case that everyone goes for. It's a great case. And no problems with that Spigen Ultra Hybrid on the backbone. One, Gen 2. So I'm hoping one of these cases you either use or you have something similar um, so you know that your case will work. Another case I recently got, this is a Rinky case with a translucent back um, and a good size uh, bumper. And that one works as well. Although this one, you can see that it is sticking up a little bit there because the bezel on the back is pretty big, but it still fits fine. You can use um, your phone for games. Let me go ahead and actually make sure those controls work. Yep, the Retro Bowl game I play a lot. You can see all the controls work, so this case works. And I'll put a link in the description for all the cases that I fit with this today, just so you can see if you want to perhaps purchase one of the cases or if you want to see if it matches with a similar case that you have from one of these manufacturers. Uh, next case is going to be this Taurus Guardian case. And I got this one because it looked great with the natural titanium on here. And as you can see, it is a thicker case. As far as being a clear case, there's a good amount of um, bumper on that to keep your phone protected. And that one fits, looks like it's gonna fit in there just fine. There's a little extra added material on the bottom. So let's just make sure that the buttons work. Yep, buttons still work, as you can see. I can go through the interface. Um, yeah, works as it should. Again, this is the Taurus Guardian case that we just tried on there. Good case. And the final case I'm gonna try on here is, this is a Spigen. This was a classic C1. So again, this is a Spigen C1. Really neat design. There is some extra material there because you have this plastic part that goes over everything to complete that kind of iMac design. Let's see if that fits. Looks like that's gonna fit. Let's go ahead and open up that game again. Just see if the buttons work. Okay, there's one that doesn't work. And although it fits physically in, in, in the backbone one and in the case, you cannot. And I'm squeezing a little bit to try and see if I can make connection. Nothing. You can see nothing. So this one is a no. Let's see what if I remove that. Instead of removing the whole case, what if I just remove this part? Because this is removable. So we're gonna remove this white part and that, that might work. Might be an annoyance to remove that though, but let's see if it works once I remove that. Back on there. And now that works. See, you can see it's working. So if you remove the white part on the Classic C1, it'll work. So, Classic C1 Spigen as a whole, it won't work. You remove this white piece though and it will work. Here's the cases we tried on today. Classic C1 Spigen will kind of work. Um, Taurus Guardian will work, yes. Rinky will work, yes. Magback will work, yes. Apple cases, I got the fine woven will work, yes. And the Ultra Hybrid Spigen will work, so. These will work as is um, this one. If you remove this white piece, then it'll work. Now it's compatible. Put this white piece back, not compatible. <laughs> so these are the cases we tried on the Backbone 1. And the timing of the release for this new Backbone couldn't be any better as there are a handful of AAA titles on the horizon. Um, Resident Evil Village was just recently released Resident Evil 4 Remake is supposed to be released December 20th, 
and the Death Stranding Director's Cut is supposed to be released before the end of the year. So those are three AAA titles that this back pole controller will make your life a whole lot easier if you want to play them on your iPhone 15 Pro. So I'm going to take my iPhone 15 Pro Max, I'm going to put it in this Taurus case, and let's go ahead and try one of those games out now. Um, I opened up the Backbone app that I installed on my iPhone 15 Pro Max and they will not give you another free year of the Backbone subscription. Um, mine already expired and I chose not to renew because like I said, I don't think it's worth it, but they will offer you 25% off. Close that out. So now we'll go to home and here's where you can add games. I guess this is, this is probably like as f the free part of the app where you can uh, do your button mapping there. You can change your button mapping if you want. Um, it gives you instructions how to do that. So when it's plugged in, you go to settings and then you can map the buttons there. So I'm not gonna bother to do that. I'll leave it at default. You can calibrate your joysticks. So there's instructions to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. You can test the buttons. If you wanna do that here as well. So as you can see, as I'm pressing buttons, they're showing up and even the D-pad. So buttons all seem to work, trigger, 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 trigger. And you press this button to end the test or hold it, not just press it. Here's where you can look for firmware updates. Right now I am up to date. Controller details all the information on your backbone controller. It looks like I have firmware version 1.0.7. You can submit feedback or restore purchase if you port purchased a subscription. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of all this. So this is one of the triple A titles I uh, mentioned, Resident Evil 4 Remake. This is Resident Evil uh, Village and then Death Stranding is coming out as well and a bunch of other titles. So I'm really interested to see how this looks on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So this appears to be all in-game graphics. If you've played this on consoles, let me know if you what you think of the graphics for the iPhone 15 Pro. How does it compare to the console graphics? Obviously it's not gonna be completely on par, but Right now, this is looking pretty good to me. There you go, sweetheart. Don't you worry. I'll be right downstairs. Daddy won't let those weird fairy tale monsters get you. I have a bad feeling about this. So I think for an iPhone game, at least what I've seen graphically, it actually looks pretty cool. Again, I don't know how this compares to the console game since I haven't played it. Oh look, creepy music. Let's go in the direction of the creepy music. Oh, it dumped. So the game dumped. So the game crashed. It's a new release. It's probably using up a lot of resources. So I'm not gonna bore you with my novice gaming skills, but that is a quick demo of Resident Evil 4, a AAA title on the iPhone 15 Pro Max using the Backbone 1 Gen 2 controller. So I thought Resident Evil Village looked really cool on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's just a little buggy. I couldn't get past a certain point, so I'm hoping a update will fix that in the future. I can get deeper into the game. Um, let me know what you think about gaming, console gaming on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. If you think it's doable, um, if you plan on picking up one of these Backbone 1 controllers. And that's going to do for this one. So until the next one, please take care and be safe out there.